Okay. Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the uh, Mongoose database lecture. Unfortunately, I forgot to record the first 10 minutes of it. Um, what we have done just now is we have, uh, we have went through um, this uh, skeleton code and skeleton code should be pretty familiar to you all, which is essentially uh, what Amal has went through in the Node.js uh, lecture. We've also went through how to set up the Mongoose uh, databases. Essentially, you simply run Brew install Mongo community to install the MongoDB databases, and then simply type use database tutorial inside the Mongo shell to start a MongoDB uh, database. And then after you, and then we'll use a package called the Mongoose package, which is used uh, for us to connect our MongoDB to the Express backend server. And then afterwards, uh, we can use this code, this lines to uh, actually connect uh, our database with the backend server. And yeah, and this is where we are at now. And sorry about that. <laughs> I forget to record lecture. Um, so yeah. I'm glad that I actually recall uh, doing this. Um, so cool. Uh, some, some differences that you might see in the lecture versus in the Notion page. In our lecture, we are using a database name called Mongo Demo. Uh, why we are doing that is because I have already created a database name with database tutorial. I kind of want to switch, switch it up. So yeah, and cool. And now we have successfully connect our Mongoose, uh, MongoDB database to our um, Express server. And now let's get into implement uh, our MongoDB model. So what's a MongoDB model? Similarly to the um, PostgreSQL model, MongoDB model is a way for you to define a database, how a database object will look like. And um, since we're only doing a to do, uh, we can have a very, very simple schema, which actually have only one fill in place. Uh, how, do we how do we define a schema? We do this by calling mongoose.schema, and then we can create a schema by um, calling new schema, and then uh, passing a JavaScript object. And the field will just be the object, will be the field of the object, and the value will be the type of the object. So for instance, if you're doing a people database, and you also want to add some age, and then you can simply do age and the number. So something along the lines of this. So yeah. And since we're only doing to do, we will only be uh, adding content. And notice that MongoDB will automatically add a, um, a ID field to the schema. And that's why we only need to add content. Uh, let's uh, copy and paste the model in. And cool. And this way, uh, we have created a to do schema. And then we apply the to do schema to the, uh, by using the Mongoose model to make it a to do model. Uh, the reason for uh, them to like implement this kind of structure as a standard way to implement like a Mongoose database schema is that we can actually add multiple schema to one model. And this is something that we can cover later on uh, in the future courses, but yeah, we can start with something simpler now. So after we have this to-do uh, model, we will be operating on this to-do model later on. Uh, for our current operations. So, yeah. And before we go into current operations, are there any questions so far? Okay, cool. And now let's go on to uh, talk about the current operations. 
Uh, I would say that once you have learned uh, PostgreSQL, it's pretty similar when you want to like learn another type of databases and learn another type of like uh, interface that connect back end to the database. And for instance here, let's actually implement our first endpoint for creating a new to-do. Remember that we are doing uh, our new endpoint here uh, in this post uh, methods. And now let's try to do that. And let's start by copy and paste this in. Well, uh, I think we actually, have we missed something? Okay, we didn't miss anything, nice. Um, and let's now look at the code. So what this code is doing, what this, this line is doing is that it's trying to create a new to-do. As you can see, we first of all do counts to do, new to do, and this is how you will create a new entry inside the to-do database. Uh, essentially what you are going to do is by calling new and then followed by the model name. And then this is pretty similar to how you create a schema. But instead you are passing the uh, field name and the actual value instead of like the type of the variable. So after you have passed this in, then we call to do dot save. And this way it will propagate all the changes to the database and then we can pass in a callback function to the to do the um, save function. And this way it will execute this callback function once the save function is completed. This is like what usually a callback function does. And this callback function is a lambda function or an arrow function uh, that does the following. Essentially it, will, uh, it takes an error and a document and then return uh, the new uh, to do content to the uh, user. As you can see, we return um, the message created to do with the to do ID. Uh, so the content of the to do, we also include the ID and the content separately. And finally, we wrap it with rest.json to convert it into a JSON object. And now, once we have this in place, let's Let's try to do npm start again. And let's go to our postman and let's add our first uh, add, uh, no. uh, add request. What's the request that we're testing? Um, create a new to do. Uh, okay, here. And the URL should be to do's. And the body should be raw, JSON. And let's see, what do we need to include? We need we only need to include content. So let's see. Uh, content. Um, since this is a to do, uh, wrapping up uh, wrapping up the padding function. This is actually something. That I'm actually doing for CS one sixty one. Uh, let's try to send it. Oh, yeah. We need to make it a post request. Otherwise, we're just getting the get request response. Let's not send it again. As you can see, we have created a need to do. You might notice there's a pretty strange number here, and this is the ID that the Mongo DB database is created uh, by itself automatically. And different from the PostgreSQL database where the ID is like uh, starts from one and they increment it one by one, MongoDB actually has a pretty uh, random star location. And the is uh, for each like new to do, it's not really incremented one by one. So MongoDB is a pretty uh, have a has a pretty strange indexing system. But yeah, we can live with that. So this is our way to create a new to-do. Uh, any questions so far? Cool. 
And now let's get into how do we uh, retrieve our to-dos since we really want to see like the new to-dos that we have just created. So let's do that. Uh, so let's copy and paste this in. And again, we are writing the um, fetch all methods inside the to-dos since well, we want to return all the to-dos. And so now let's see. So how do we um, query the database? This is how do this is how we did query the database. We essentially do to do the find. And if we don't provide any, uh, if we don't provide any parameter for the find methods, then it will fetch all the um, entries within the to do database. And after it fetch the result, then we can simply uh, pass in a callback function, or actually it's a promise, and this promise will return all the to dos. So after this promise is resolved, we are passing a callback function, and this callback function is simply returning the message saying that return all to dos, and also the all the to dos. So let's uh, restart our MongoDB. Add a new request. Oh, Wait, why is this still showing up as? That's so weird. Hmm. Yeah, let's try to, to get out to do. So let's hit send. As you can see, uh, we have received our first do. Well, let's actually create some new to do's. So, uh, for uh, send. Oh, this drink or stay hydrated. And now let's get to our all uh, fetching all the to dos. We have just newly created two new to dos. If we hit send again, we should be seeing the to do two to dos uh, here. As we can see, uh, we received the two to dos prepare for hack.js this weekend and also stay hydrated, uh, drink some water. And now let's move on to fetching one single to do. And now let's see. And well, since we're only fetching one to do, we are going to write this inside this URL, which means that we can we will actually write it here. So let's copy and paste this thing. Essentially what this is trying to do is that first of all, you will look at the to do databases and then we'll use the method find by ID. And then uh, find by ID will uh, find the to do's according to the to do ID. And then the front end, need, uh, so far on the front end, they need to um, return a to do ID from it. And then after we they return to the ID, we also pass in a callback function. And this callback function will uh, essentially handle the logic of uh, returning the actual content back to the user. So as you can see, if we encounter an error message, uh, YD, okay. if we encounter an error message, then we send back uh, the error, and else uh, we simply return the uh, get the content from it to do. So let's actually add helps. Uh, let's try to do it. Notice that um, it's actually getting the request of parameter to the ID instead of like the to do content. Uh, as a result, the front end needs to have like a method uh, for them to kind of like remember the to the ID that they want to uh, like uh, request. So what usually um, this method is trying to, what, what the usual use case for this method is that when the front end, so after the front end call like all to do's, 
when the user tries to get like only one to do content, then they can simply like fetching uh, one to do ID from all the to do IDs that they have just received. So yeah. Uh, let's try to run it. Oh, let's create a new uh, quest. Get a single key. And cool. And now we need to uh, think about which to do do we want to fetch. Let's say we want to fetch our first to do. So we copy the ID and follow it by this. And now let's hit send. As you can see, we receive uh, this uh, content, the content from this to do. And if we try to fetch another to do, uh, another, uh, yeah, the other to do, for instance, this one, let's change it here, let's hit send. As you can see, we change it to prepare for hack.js this weekend. So yeah, so this is essentially for a way for you to fetch one single to do. And any questions so far? Oh, I guess I kind of just have a general question about, um, I think I'm a little bit confused how like post Gree and like um, Django and like MongoDB kind of like relate. Like, are is one like um, a substitute for the other? Or do they all like work together? Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, uh, maybe I can draw, draw a graph here. Uh, so essentially, the there are like two um, kinds of scenes that we are learning right now. Um, Wait, why, why need to authorize? That's so annoying. Uh, one is that we are learning databases. And the other thing is called, um, um, the other thing is called backend server. And MongoDB and PostgreSQL, they are both like uh, databases. And so, yeah, let me draw a graph. So here, and this will be like MongoDB. And this will be um, PostgreSQL. And they are all, they are all belongs to databases. So uh, we can draw here, database. Oops. Is there a way for me to? Yeah, and they all belongs to, oops. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> they, they all belongs to databases. And there's also like another thing, which is called like um, backend server. So let's try that. Um, and there are essentially two kinds of backend server. One is, uh, one is Django. And the other is Express. And today we are kind of like learning Express combined with MongoDB. And uh, for the last lecture, we are learning Django combined with PostgreSQL. However, you can also combine Django with MongoDB, or you can combine like Django Express with PostgreSQL. Uh, they all they all work together well. So yeah, this is kind of like the relationship, but you kind of have to pick one backend server and then pick one database. So yeah. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Uh, okay. Now let's get into the uh, update. So how do we update a to-do? We use a method called find by ID and update. I know these are, these methods are pretty literal, like their name. So um, it's pretty fun to learn. So um, so how do we up? Uh, so when, where do we update to do? We also update here under the to do slash column to do ID URL. Uh, we put it here. 
using the put method. Put method is generally used for uh, us to update a uh, something's content. As you can see, it's pretty similar to the get request method. The only difference being that we're using the find ID and update. So we first of all pass in the ID of the uh, to do, and then we also include the content of the to do. So the content is from like the request.body.content, which is like something that the user sent it to us. So yeah. And so find by the update takes in three parameters. First of all, it's the ID. Second is the actual content. And third is the callback function. And the callback function, again, will be performed after we have you know, done the updates. And it will return. So for this particular method, well, well, we will return the old to do and also the newly updated to do. So let's save it and run again. Uh, if we look at Postman, if we create a request, a, a, if we change it to put, oh, now it becomes post. That's pretty weird. Huh? Uh, let's uh, let's say we want to update the content for this uh, to do prepare for hack.js this weekend. And, uh, and let's say we want to add it to be uh, uh, oh finish the slide for MongoDB. If we hit save, and if we hit send, as you can see, it first of all return the old to do, and then return a new to do. So the old to do is that the content is prepared for Hack.js this weekend, and the new to do is that finish this slide for MongoDB tutorial. Something to know that uh, is uh, after we run find ID by update, the callback function that we have passing this to do parameter will automatically be the old to do. And the new to do, we simply uh, use uh, parse the request.params and the request.body again to return new to do. So, yeah, this is just something to be uh, careful about. And if we run our get all to do's again, as you can see, if we haven't run it, uh, it still shows prepare for hackers this weekend. And if we run it, um, the to do is now updated to finish the slide for MongoDB tutorial. So, this is a put method. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, great. And now let's move on to our final method, which is the delete method. And the delete method is also pretty straightforward in my opinion. Uh, essentially, we're using the find by ID and delete method. And uh, yeah, as you may find out, um, writing like actually using database is much simpler than what you might uh, be learning in CS186, like the actual database course. Because usually we will have the very industry level standard database methods ready. And this way, uh, writing code is much, much easier. Um, so, yeah. So, for our delete method, we use a find ID by find by ID and delete. We pass in the to do ID, and then we also pass in a callback function. Uh, the callback function will um, delete the to do, will return a message saying deleting the to do, and also the content of the to do that we have deleted. So now let's add a new request to do and change it to delete. And let's say um, I'm already hydrated enough. I don't really want to get hydrated. 
So I want you to delete the drink, uh, drink water too. Sixty-nine. Now, if we, if we hit send, oops, we haven't run again. We haven't restart server. And if we hit send, as you can see, uh, it now shows a message saying delete the to do and also the content of the actual to do. So that's it for the delete method. And And here are some resources that's pretty useful for you when you try to like learn know and express. Yeah. So that's it for today's lecture. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Chana, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, yeah, that's it for today's lecture. Thank you all for coming. I will see you all during weekend. And remember to join our hackathon. It's going to be a little. Uh, there are quality prizes for, for the hackathon. So yeah. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you.